So my name is Krista Avro. I'm the assessment coordinator at the Maine DOE for the Maine Science Assessment. Um, and we have some other members with us as well. Uh, Susan, if you want to just go to my little update slide, I'll start with that. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. So just before we jump into the lockdown browser training, there have been some updates. So some timely updates to let you just let you know about. So proctor training, um, there is a new proctor training video that's required for your proctors. It's nine minutes. It's just the basics of proctoring. If you have any new proctors that didn't watch the assessment security webisodes yet this year or signed the MEA uh, assessment security and data privacy agreement, um, they will need to do that once per academic year. There, the order form for standard and large print assessments is live, and we're going to send out these slides so you'll have all of these links. And then we do have new released items as well on our main science assessment webpage, as well as some new supplemental text-to-speech guidance for your students who do not have an accommodation on IEP 504 plan or individual language acquisition plan. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Susan. Okay, thank you all for being here. Um, I think the introduction slides says that uh, the presentation will be run by Bob Wolf, but uh, I am not Bob Wolf, I'm Susan Van Gundy. And um, I am with MCD that has the um, technology platform upon which the assessment is being delivered called the Atom. And that is what we're gonna be talking about today, a portion of the overall Atom platform called the Lockdown Browser, the Atom Lockdown Browser. And um, many of you have been through this in years past and the, the process um, is the same. Um, there's a few new features and um, caveats to uh, give for you, um, but overall the, the lockdown browser experience is going to be very similar to what you've um, had in previous years of the main science assessment. Uh, but we are gonna go over everything in detail uh, so that those who are new to the process and new to the assessment um, also get all the information they will need to be successful in um, installing and or downloading first and then installing lockdown browsers on student test taking devices and then how the lockdown browser gets used by the students um, during testing. Um, we're also going to go over some of the alert messages that might show up on the student's screen both at the point of launching the assessment inside the lockdown browser and then also um, during testing um, and what you might want to do about that. Um, we'll go over some common questions that come up uh, with regard to lockdown browser install and usage. And we will spend quite a bit of time showing you where there are resources available to you after today, after our time together today, um, so that you can reference those when you go to do the browser install um, and are getting closer to the delivery of the assessment because we've still we're still a few weeks out. So um, we will have time for Q&A at the end, but if you have questions that come up during the course of the slides I'll be presenting, please do feel free to put them in the chat. The chat is being monitored and um, somebody will tell me, I can't see it at the moment, but somebody will tell me that there's a question and read me the question and I will do my very best to answer in the moment and hopefully be able to like point things out to you on the screen um, to answer those questions. And um, at the end, the recording of this session will be posted to where the other support resources are available um, and a written um, transcript, so to speak, of the questions that came up and the responses for those. So with that, I will start with uh, where, I'm gonna start with resources and end with resources so that you are very familiar with where they are. Um, so there are a number of different documents and articles that are available to you at what is the 
specific support desk for the main science assessment. We have our own. I know there are other assessments you are also working on, um, but we do have our own help desk with our own help desk phone number. Um, and But a lot of it is designed, especially in this uh, pre-assessment window time period, um, designed for uh, self-service for a lot of uh, things that you can read and download and the how-tos and the tutorials. So um, that will be a good place to look for those. It's uh, mescience.zendesk.com. You sometimes hear us refer to the whole site as the Zendesk site. Um, and there are tutorials and webinars, recordings of the training sessions, like the one we're doing right now. Um, there are all of the manuals, including the uh, assessment administrator's guide and the accessibility guide um, and accommodation, accessibility and accommodations guide, uh, the, the technical user manual, all of those kinds of documents are there. Um, and then from this site, you can also request additional help um, by submitting a ticket through the online request system. Um, and then you can also call or do live chat once those are enabled. I think uh, both of those are not yet live. Um, they'll be available in a few weeks as we're getting closer to the opening of the assessment window. And then there are a bunch of articles um, that are written out. Uh, they're just web pages, but um, they take information from the very uh, extensive manuals and pull snippets out that are just that description or instructions on a particular thing. So I'll be pointing out some of those as we go along as well. So that's the best place to, to start um, if you need additional assistance after today. Um, there is a specific lockdown browser guide called the Device System and Lockdown Browser Installation Guide. Um, and this is the the cover, so you know what that looks like with the full title. Oops, how do I go backward? Um, and then uh, this is just a, a screenshot from a page within the document so that you can see that there's written instructions, there are uh, screenshots of what you'll see um, on the screen of the test taking device at that point when you're doing an installation or you're seeing a warning message, and then step-by-step -step instructions um, on how to install. We're going to go over some of this today, but there's Mac and Windows instructions, there's Chromebook instructions, and iPad uh, installations instructions as well. And that's all detailed out in these written guides. You can download this as a PDF, um, or you can view the entire thing online, and then it's excerpted into individual articles around some of the, the pieces and, and parts. So uh, hopefully to make it easy for you to find what you need. Um, this is an example of the of an article uh, about lockdown browser instructions with hyperlinks to the, the different pieces. And you can see over here on this side of the screenshot, when there's an article, then there's also other articles that are related in that section that are kind of queued up for you. And um, so then you can link to them. Some of them are very specific, like test is blocked message. What does that mean? So that you don't have to wade through the whole guide to find that information. Um, and then, as I mentioned, once uh, the Q&A session from last year is, is up there right now, but as soon as we're done today, we'll be replacing that with um, today's session. And you can go back and watch a uh, recording of this session. I believe so, <laughs> if Krista started the recording. Um, and yes, I did. then... I did. Okay, because I did not. Um, and then uh, the supplemental, the really materials, um, links and things will be posted there as well. Okay, so what is the lockdown browser and why do you need it? Um, uh, for any online assessment, there is a delivery platform and administration platform and for main science assessment that is called Adam, the assessment um delivery and management system. That's what ADAM stands for. Um, but uh, 
for those of you who are a district test core assessment coordinator or a school assessment coordinator or technology coordinators, you have logins to the administrative side of Adam, um, and those will be covered in uh, subsequent trainings over the next few weeks. Um, today, we'll only be talking about the part of the system that is for delivery of the assessments to the students. And um, this is a unique custom software application um, that is for delivery of the test to the students. And um, it's called a lockdown browser because it's based on web browser technology um, to make it easy to install and easy to update and uh, to help make it work across all of the different types of operating systems and devices that students are using for test taking. Um, and so it is something that is required to deliver the test. Um, you can't just go and open up any web browser window and take the test because this is a secure test, a secure assessment. And um, for that purpose of security and student privacy, uh, we use the, the lockdown browser as the means of delivery. And so it does have to be installed on every student test taking device. And that is how students will actually launch the test. Um, when the time comes, they will open up the Atom Lockdown Browser application. They'll enter their credentials, um, which is their state student ID and the test code that you'll have from the test ticket. And um, that is how they will actually launch the device. And what the Lockdown Browser does is it kind of takes over the screen of the computer and um, makes it so that students can't be also simultaneously accessing other applications or other browser windows. So the only thing they can be doing when they're taking the test using the lockdown browser is accessing the test. Um, if they do try to navigate away from that, uh, we sometimes call that make the machine lose focus um, on that current application. And that could happen um, by plugging in some other uh, monitor or while the test is running or keystroke combinations, like um, it disables the ability for the student to take a picture of the screen, for instance, even just using keystrokes, um, those are disabled. And so that's, that's the locking down part of the lockdown browser to prevent access to any other computer programs or internet sites um, for test security and student security and privacy. Um, and also to ensure that the um, students are having the same testing experience. So this is a, an equity and a test validity uh, rationale as well, um, so that people can have different browser settings on their own regular browser, but this forces them to take it with the same um, types of functionalities and tools so that kids are having the same testing experience on any of the computer devices. Um, and so with that, any questions so far? There is one question, Susan, but you're going to answer it on the next slide, so. No okay, <laughs> great. Um, so you will need to, as we said, download this on um, every student device. And that can be done on some devices, individual machines. So individual laptops are fine. Um, with Chromebooks though, it does have to be done in the enterprise mode, um, the managed Chromebook situation. Um, but, uh, and if you have managed iPads, you can do it as a managed install or individual device install. Um, so that just depends on how the system is being run at the school, but it will, the newest version, uh, we do recommend, even though you'll see when we get to it, some of the version numbers have not changed from last year. Um, it's still fundamentally the same version of the, of the lockdown browser, um, but we do recommend that you go in and just do a fresh install um, that, that helps ensure that you are getting the right version um, and that uh, you know, it's, it's ready for this year's testing. Um, and so 
once you download it, we'll go over like where you get to the package, software package to download. Um, and that will be based on your operating system or the operating system of the student device. And, um, you know, you'll know how to install that or your technology team will um, based on whether you're running Windows or Mac or Chromebooks. Um, we get this question a lot. You do not need to create an account to download. Um, it's a free download, so there's no payment required. You don't have to do anything to, to set or configure, set it up or configure it. Um, if you just download it and in, it will self-install, um, all of those things. And we want all the settings to be the same uh, for everybody. So there isn't a way to do any additional settings configurations once it's um, installed. So, um, and then on the test day, um, students will need to have that available to them, ready to open to start the test. All right, so um, based on the machine you're using and its operating system, there are a couple of different ways to access the software package to do the download. Um, for Mac OS and Windows, um, we go to adamexam.com is the regular web page that you would go to. And on the right-hand side, you will be given options to take a test, proctor a test, or download the lockdown browser. So that's the one we have highlighted here in red. Um, and then when you select to download the lockdown browser, this is the dialog box that will open um, for you. And you will have the option to install for Mac Silicon, install for Mac Intel, or install for Windows. And um, if you're installing for Windows, you just click on that and download the package and install and as you would any other uh, application, web application. Um, if you are installing for Mac, then you might need to know if you should install for Silicon or Intel. And that will depend on the, the actual um, you know, model of the, device that you're running. So older computers, older MacBooks um, have Intel, might have Intel chips and you can look online for like what year and model number, um, but uh, and newer devices will be using the Mac Silicon download. Um, and those are devices that have a, an M1 or an M2 processor, M1 chip. Um, and then the Mac Intel chips. If you're not sure, you can go to the Apple machine um, and always in that upper left-hand corner, there's the Apple icon. If you click on that, it will bring down a dialog box. The first option is about this Mac. And then this is the window that opens up. Um, it's a snippet of it. Um, and in the overview tab, it will say the name of the... Um, version of the operating system that you're running and what kind of machine you have and then what the chip is. And it will say M1, M2, or Intel um, there in that line where it is giving the data about the chip that is on the actual device. Um, and so then once you have selected one of these three options, um, like we said, it will initiate the download and then you install it based on how you install web apps for that machine. And um, I keep clicking on that, that's so annoying. Um, and then you'll know once installation is complete, it's gonna put an icon that looks like this, a big giant A with a green check mark behind it. That is the Atom logo and that's the icon. Um, and depending on your system, it may put it on the desktop, it may, of the, of the uh, device, it may put it in the system tray or you might need to um, go to applications and choose it from the list. Um, it kind of depends on how you have your machine set up. But um, that icon is then how you're going to use to launch the test. And even if on first install, it doesn't show up right there where students can find it easily, it's good to put a shortcut to it um, right where kids can find it very easily when test day 
arrives. Um, the location uh, is a little different for Chromebooks. Um, again, we mentioned that the, the only managed Chromebooks are supported. Um, so if you have students, I don't think there are any of these anymore, but um, there used to be many more sort of bring your own device scenarios. Um, and uh, that is not supported for Chromebooks, bring your own Chromebook device. But uh, with the central management, you'll sign into your Google admin console and um, devices, Chrome, apps, extensions, kiosks, and then you will need to do the settings that you do for um, installing applications that get pushed out to all the machines in your managed um, device network. Uh, and then, you know, all of this information, like I'm, <laughs> the test delivery ID for Chromebook apps is interesting, but you know about that if you work with these. Um, and this information is in the manual. So it's not something you have to remember off this slide or jot down <laughs> with a pen and paper right now. Um, that is in all the documentation that we have available online and in the lockdown browser guide. Um, and then uh, when it is time to take the test, students should not log into their Chromebook. They should just select Adam from the system tray um, to launch the application when the time comes. With iOS, uh, you do need to go to the App Store for iPad. Um, right now, it's not supported to be administering the main science assessment on a phone, on an iPhone, um, or the device, just the iPads. Um, and in the app store, you'll search for Atom Secure Browser, and then you download it and open it as you do any other app that you're downloading from the app store. Um, and then it again places the icon um, there in the home screen of your iPad, and students will use that to launch the test on the day of assessment. So um, some common questions about the download and install process. Um, again, we do recommend uh, that you install the latest lockdown browser every year. Um, and the versions for spring 2024, we have listed here. Um, the Mac version number is the same as last year's, but um, there have been, you know, we're maintaining the browser to stay up to date with all the latest security and everything. Um, so if you, again, we just always recommend that you start with a fresh, <laughs> fresh version. Um, the inst uh, for Windows, this version number has changed since last year. Uh, currently, if you go today, it's version 1.6.6. Um, there is a 1.6.7 that uh, has a release pending for May um, before the window starts. Uh, so if you can wait, that's good to do. Um, but if you are doing your setup ahead of the release of version 6.7, 1.6.6 will work and it's fine. This is uh, more about the, the new releases about refreshing um, how we have the application registered in the for download um, with the Windows environments. So it's functionality is the same. Um, and security is the same, but um, there will be a version 1.6.7 that will be released here in the upcoming weeks, just so you know. But again, you can test with either of these for spring 24 for main science assessment. Um, iPad is version 1.0.4. That's different from last year. That's an update, so you'll need to reinstall. And Chromebook version 1.3.4 is also an updated version compared to last year. So you'll wanna do a fresh install on that. Um, when you do install, it will uninstall the previous versions for you. You don't have to do that as a separate step. Um, and, uh, and the dialog boxes around that vary depending on your operating system, but um, you don't have to go in and make sure that you've uninstalled an older version first before you install the new version. And um, 
we already mentioned that uh, only managed Chromebooks are supported at this time. Um, and just a reminder, <laughs> I, we're ringing this bell a few times, but um, you have to use the Atom Lockdown Browser to take the main science assessment. Um, there are other assessments that you're running and some of those have their own um, different custom browser applications and you will need a different Lockdown Browser for each of the different assessments. Um, there is not one universal one that works across math and reading and um, science. So uh, Adam is the one for science. Um, this is for Mac users. Uh, the main department of education in past years had released a JAMP file um, for you to use. Uh, and our understanding is that um, there will not be a release from the main department of ed for that. Uh, but um, I think that there is uh, networking within um, the technology coordinators uh, in the different schools that are supporting each other on that, if that's something that you need assistance with. Um, and then we just went over for, for this year. Uh, I also just pulled, you know, this is the, the recommended operating systems. This is in the manuals as well. Um, but, uh, the operating system cannot be running in a virtualized environment. It needs to be, um, you know, the device on the machine, uh, or excuse me, the application is on the test taking device. And then um, for Mac OS, uh, there are some later versions out there, but this is our recommended sort of like optimized for, um, and generally it's always or newer um, for, for any of these. Uh, it's optimized for Windows 10. Um, we always maintain support for the latest three releases of Chrome OS, whatever that is. Um, and then the iPad OS or iOS um, versions um, are there for, for this year for the optimized. optimized. Yep. Okay, I'm gonna uh, pause there for questions. Um, other system requirements though, that you, well, I'll just pause <laughs> for questions about the installation so far. Yep, so there's a question that just came in the chat. Um, if a school is a bring your own device for students, what is the best policy for them to install the Atom Lockdown browser? This might be a joint you and me question, but I'll let you take a stab at it first. Um, yeah, so I think the policy in the past has been that it is best to do that with the school technology, um, with support from your school technology coordinator, um, rather than something that the students like do at home and then bring in. But, um, I am, and it, if it's bring your own device, as long as they're not Chromebooks, if it's bring your own iPad or bring your own laptop that's a Windows or Mac laptop, um, then that can work. Uh, in terms of the, the policy for who does the install and where, uh, I don't know, Krista, if you have issued guidance on that in the past. We have not issued specific guidance on that component, um, but I would agree with Susan on it should occur under the guidance of the school technology coordinator or assessment coordinator just to ensure that students have the correct application um, and all of that, but. And we always recommend that, um, you know, technology coordinators are running, uh, you know, a dry run, a test run, <laughs> opening it up, uh, making sure that there, cause there are these other requirements for the system to run um, the level of, internet connectivity available. Um, there are whitelist, there are applications that have to be whitelisted um, for the system to run properly. Uh, there are, you know, you wanna make sure that the, the resolution on the screen is of a certain level for it to, you know, our recommended levels. Um, and so, you know, and in the guidance, I know that 
schools have different policies, uh, agreements that they have with the students about um, who from a district or school can, can be working on a student device. Um, but again, working together is, is gonna be best because there are a number of other things that should be checked before the day of assessment. And um, I'm not going into all of the details here for these other system requirements, but they are in the lockdown browser guide. Um, so, you know, the range of, of different hardware and um, yeah, display settings and, and things like that. Um, there's quite a bit about uh, permitted peripherals as well in terms of um, audio support, headphones or earbuds for students who are using text-to-speech. Um, and then uh, students who need to have uh, a second monitor for um, as an accommodation, there's some information about that. The, the general system rule though is that um, only one screen can be enabled at a time. So if there is an external monitor that a student is using as part of an accommodation uh, connected to a laptop, the laptop's screen has to be disabled um, and projection only to a single display. Um, and so there's information about that as well in the guide um, that all those details are there. Um, and I thought I had... Yeah, there we go. We'll get to that. Um, uh, I'll go over what, what some of those things are like when we get to the warning messages here in a moment. Um, Susan, just real quick before we step into how to use the Atom Lockdown Browser. Yes. Um, so just checking in on dates. So for clarification, the most recent Atom Lockdown Browser is available now, today? Yes. Yep. Okay. So if you do have a BYO, BYOD school, to ensure that you know all students who need to access the assessment are able to access the assessment, we do recommend that sooner than later. Yep. The assessment administration window doesn't open until May 13th, but if you are a BYOD school, please do it sooner than later just so we can ensure that your students have devices that they need. Um, and then I'm going to let Andy Wallace chime in about yes. Andy, file thank you. That you mentioned. Yeah, absolutely. So um, as some of you know, in the past, we've made some configuration profiles, uh, shared some configuration profile recommendations and how to install the NWA browser. And uh, we were waiting for, for the final version of this browser um, before we make those instructions. But if you go in the chat, I'll paste um, a link there to a little website that Mike Arsenault uh, over at Yarmouth spun up. And I really appreciate Mark, Mike's help um, with this. And you'll notice that the science one is, is noticeably empty and it will be fleshed out uh, early next week once we get a chance. Uh, people have done this, they say it's a really easy install, but it doesn't hurt to have a little bit of documentation there. It's sort of like a place where we can share um, what we call like quick starts. You know, obviously, as you're hearing from Susan, there's the right way to do stuff. And, and of course, Krista would reinforce the right way to do stuff. But if we come across any things where the community is running into similar problems or uh, has found efficiencies, we'll share it, we'll share it right there. So uh, keep an eye on that website. Probably around Tuesday, there'll be a little more information now that we have the official word on the browser versions. Thank you so much, Andy. Krista, any other questions coming in? No, we are all set to keep moving. Okay, great. So um, now we're gonna actually use this on uh, to do our checks uh, in advance and um, then on the day of assessment. Um, first of all, the device needs to be connected to the internet. And if you try to launch the lockdown browser and you're not connected to the internet, it will tell you that you need to be. So you do get a message there um, before starting any testing. Um, you will need to quit all other applications and browser windows that are running on the test taking device. And um, so I know sometimes it's counterintuitive. People are like, well, it's the lockdown browser, so I should have 
Chrome or Edge open, but actually all of those thing, other browsers, regular browsers should be shut down um, or closed when launching this. And if they're not, you will get a warning that um, there are other applications running in the background and it will tell you which ones. Um, and then you can go close those down and come back and retry. Um, the, what you'll get is a window that looks something like this. When the browser, browser launches, it takes over the screen, so it goes into full screen mode. Um, and uh, you will have something that looks like this where you're ready to enter test code. Um, but then there are also these two buttons, <coughs> excuse me. One is an app check. Um, the technology coordination team will have already done this, but when you go in to, to do your checks, you can always click on that. Um, that does a quick rundown of, um, you know, is there enough battery? Are all the right whitelisted applications allowed? Um, all of those things, and they'll give some little green check marks if everything looks good. Um, and then I forgot to make a screenshot of that, I'm sorry. Um, and then test audio will allow the students who are using text-to-speech to adjust the audio levels on their headphones or on their machine um, before the system goes into lockdown. Um, because once it does, then their keyboard commands are going to be disabled, including to increase or decrease the volume. And so uh, best to test out the audio. It gives some pings and, um, or tones, and uh, you can adjust the volume to the, to the right setting before entering a test code and hitting next. Um, uh, as the test is launching, you know, if any other alert messages, we're going to go over what some of those are. If they appear during launch, uh, follow the directions. Um, most of them tell you what you need to do and then give you the opportunity to retry. But sometimes you have to quit uh, the lockdown browser application entirely and then relaunch it. Um, and then when the time comes for... <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, the student test code will be entered as how to get to the next screen. Um, and that will be in your administration instructions um, and the test codes that are on the test tickets that you can print out ahead of time. Um, and then there is a lot of documentation and whole other trainings that we're gonna do over the next few weeks about that part of the process, making sure your students are in the right administrations, knowing what they're, um, making sure they have the right student ID assigned in the system and that um, the, you can see the test tickets there. And so there's, you'll, you'll follow those instructions and policies, um, for how, uh, the pacing, the script, those kinds of things for when students should be entering their credentials. But this is what it looks like on the screen for them. And then, um, at the end of the test, it comes back to a screen that looks kind of like this. Um, but up in the right-hand corner, there'll be the opportunity to exit. So again, according to the scripts and things like that, um, that is how the student will, will exit the application. Uh, I really should have had the little exit button showing because during the assessment, sometimes kids accidentally click on that. <laughs> And um, we have some information coming up about what to do if that happens. But um, other messages that you might encounter during uh, launching the lockdown browser, this is just an example. This one says network issue, but the, the graphics are very similar and it gives you some information. This one says unable to connect to the online testing server, tap retry and contact your proctor if you continue to have problems. Um, but uh, so, oh, go ahead. Oops, sorry, I thought I was being asked to pause for a question. 
Um, so if you do have a slow network or no network connectivity, you may get this, one of these error messages uh, when you're launching. Um, we've already mentioned it'll tell you if you have uh, prohibited applications running in the background uh, or if your battery is low and that one will stop you. Too slow a network, not connected to the internet, other applications running, you will not be allowed to proceed until those are resolved. Um, for some of these others, it just gives you a warning. So it will say low battery, um, but you can just click okay and keep going if you choose to, <laughs> um, but that's not recommended, but it will not stop you from launching the test if there's uh, considered to be below the threshold of battery power left. Um, same thing, well, if there's an external monitor, that one will stop you from being able to do um, insufficient memory or low resolution display. That's also just uh, a, an alert um, that won't stop you from running the test, uh, but especially that low resolution one, um, it can make the student test taking experience uh, less than optimal if, if their display is, screen resolution is too, out of whack from the, the recommended uh, specifications there. This last one is something that we hadn't really, didn't have to talk about last year. It's sort of a new issue that um, sometimes can be encountered. Um, if your students are working like on a Surface tablet or something else where you're running Windows and Microsoft Edge is the default uh, browser, even if you're not using it on a regular basis, um, there may still be things running in the background, uh, edge um, processes that are running in the background all the time. And even if you've closed the edge browser, you have no active windows uh, open in your web browser or tabs um, for edge, it may still have processes running in the background that have to be shut down before um, the Atom Lockdown browser will be allowed to launch. And so, you know, we don't have to go through these detailed instructions now, but um, this uh, whole box here um, is an excerpt from the manual, the Lockdown Browser Guide. So this information is out there for you in the guide um, to tell you how to disable that always running or continue running background extensions when Microsoft is edge is closed. Um, and so hopefully that will be helpful for you. And then I just, uh, you know, repeated this information about when you launch it and the system is doing its startup checks, um, the kind of experience that you might have there, um, where some things are, it will stop you from launching and others you can, you can proceed with caution about. So then there are some other messages that are warning messages that you might get when launching the test. Um, and these are not so much about the technology or about the device. They're more about the ed entering the credentials to start the test. So you may, and they all kind of look like this where you get a, suddenly a big red orange box with an exclamation point. And there are different messages that you'll, you'll see there. Um, one of them is that the student is not found. Uh, what that means is usually that they typed their SSID in incorrectly <laughs> and just need to re-enter it, that there was a, a transcription error when they, yeah, you know. Um, so, the, and you can't copy and paste it because you're, the student will be in lockdown mode and pasting is prohibited activity. So that's why we have the test tickets. But um, the most common thing if it says the student is not found is that the ID was typed in incorrectly and just do it again. Um, but sometimes it means that there's an issue with the rostering um, and that you would need to go into the Atom administrative interfaces where you manage your students and uh, make sure that the student is assigned, uh, that they're on the roster to, for testing. Um, 
you might get a message that the test is not found. And that is generally that the test code has been typed in incorrectly. Um, if just double check against the code on the test ticket. Um, and if, if it's entered correctly, then, but it is still saying test not found. Um, you can go back to the admin interface. Uh, sometimes it's that the different session, you kind of pulled the wrong session <laughs> um, for that student. Um, and so the, again, you would check on that. And then if it's still giving an error, you would contact the help desk. Um, the test might say it's already in session and that's what this graphic says, session in use, this session is already in use, please ask your proctor to reseat you. Um, there are a couple reasons why that can happen. Um, the answer is always to reseat the student and I have a whole screen coming up to talk about that reseat um, and situations where you might need to reseat the student and uh, during that process, when the kid tries to log in, if they have not yet been reseated, it will say the session is already in use. Um, we have a new warning message this year, and that is that the test is blocked. And that's this one over here. The test is blocked. You are prevented from taking the test. Um, this is uh, oops, <laughs> uh, a new um way that we are managing students who receive a paper test. And um, because for this main science assessment, uh, the students' responses are not entered into the online system locally. The, the paper, uh, actual paper test, the student's response on paper is, um, is sent back to our test administration and we uh, are entering the, you know, our, why can I not think of the name, Krista? <laughs> um, anyway, uh, we will be doing that. Um, the, the, the state will be handling, making sure that the um, students' responses are transcribed from paper into the online system for scoring. So that's not something that's done locally and we know that that differs from some other tests. So that's why we have made um, a specific message that will come up. If you have the students, um, because in the, in the registrations, uh, the kids will still be rostered to the session and they'll still have a test code associated with their name, but um, you don't enter it into the online system. And if you do, it will tell you that the test is blocked because the student uh, has a paper test instead. And then the uh, mitigation for that is to proceed with the procedures for administering a paper test. And then um, the sometimes you'll get a message that the session has already been submitted. Um, and that either means that the student already completed the test, worked through everything, gave all responses and hit finish and the test was submitted, um, that session of the test. And since there are multiple sessions, um, sometimes this comes up where the, the wrong session code was given to the student. The, uh, there's four sessions total, four parts to the test. And um, if you took if the student already took session two, but here we are launching session three, but you're giving them the session two code, um, they might have that message come up uh, that the session is already submitted. Um, but sometimes students accidentally submit their test <laughs> and they then that becomes a uh, process that requires LDOE approval to unsubmit the test and reopen it and have the student reseated to the test and then they would start again. Um, but sometimes there are situations where a student started a test on a given day and then something happened. There was a fire drill. All the students had to stop the test, leave, go on, uh, exit the school, and then the next day they're retest, opening the test again. Um, if that's the case, then it when you come back, it will say that the student's test has uh, already been completed because we do have auto submit working. And so any unfinished sessions 
will be auto submitted at the end of the day. And if uh, again, the student needs to re-enter a test that's already been either submitted or auto submitted by the system, um, that then is a case where there has to be approval from MDOE. And I'm sorry, I, I don't know why I have a typo there. It says LDOE, I'll fix that before uh, we post these, Krista. Um, Sounds good. That should be MDOE. I can't type apparently. Um, so uh, yeah, that, that then launches a, a whole other process. But um, so, you know, when you see these various messages, that's what you need to do. And then if you do need to reseat the student, we thought we would just go over that because that can happen pretty commonly. There's a, a number of reasons why that can happen during a, a test session. Um, if the student has been uh, idle for too long, um, it will close the close the lockdown browser, exit them from the lockdown browser for security reasons. Um, it's it's a good long time, but uh, again, sometimes kids get depending on your local policy that they might uh, all you know something comes up where all the students have to leave in which case you should put it on pause um, for all students. But if you don't, then it could be a timeout uh, sort of scenario. Um, but that is one way. Um, if there's a network disruption, if the, if the internet goes out for two minutes in your school, when you resume, the students will say they need to be reseated, that the session is already in progress and that um, they should be reseated by the proctor. Uh, sometimes kids click that, it's kind of like this, it says exit and it has a little X up in the corner of the test. And sometimes they just accidentally click that for whatever reason. Um, and if they do, then they will need to be reseated to, to resume testing on that same day of testing during the same session. Um, and then the other is one of the things that the lockdown browser was designed for. So the system will close the test um, if it detects that the student is trying to access an unallowed program or uh, take an unallowed action, like trying attempting to take a screenshot um, using keyboard commands. Uh, it will not only prevent the prevent that from happening, but it will exit the student from the test. And then you will need to uh, reseat them. So in the guides for administering the test, you'll see mention of, you know, if, if a student has been kicked out of the system, um, that could be an indicator of an irregularity of some kind. And so, you know, you'll want to monitor for that and proceed according to policy. But if you do go to reseat them, um, this is a screenshot of the Proctor dashboard. Um, and there are two ways to reseat students. Um, one is to reseat all, and there is a button for that uh, right here. Um, and that would be, again, if, if something with the whole class um, and you need to Reseat in bulk. <laughs> um, that's just an easier way to do it rather than going in individually for every student and reseating them. Um, but if it is just one student, um, you would go to the, the the three dots menu, sometimes called a kebab menu um, or a burger menu. And those uh, three little dots, if you click on it, it expands into a box that looks like this and says actions. Um, only actions that are available to you for the student given the status of their testing will show up there. So this menu changes depending on uh, whether student has not started, whether they submitted, whether they're in progress, whether they need to be reseated. Um, all of those will uh, bring different combinations of the action buttons depending on what's actually available for you to do for that student at that time. But if you do click on that when a student is in progress, but they're getting a, a message that they need to be reseated, um, you'll click on those three buttons. You'll get this action menu that will pop up um, where you can pause or reseat the session, and you will choose to reseat the session. 
And if you do, you'll get a dialog box that pops up on your screen, making sure that you want to reseat that student session. And if you click yes, then the student's status will change from in progress to reseated. Um, and you may need to refresh. You can manually refresh uh, your um, status screens by clicking on this little refresh button. You can set your Proctor dashboard so that it's auto refreshing every five minutes so that you don't have to go in and continually manually refresh. But um, I always remind people of that because even I do this sometimes. I think, well, that didn't work. Why didn't it work? Why didn't the, I push the button? Why did the kid not get receded? And then, oh, right. I got to refresh my screen and um, indeed their status changes. But um, it it's just faster to know that it worked <laughs> if you hit that refresh button. Um, otherwise you, you wait and then it refreshes over time. But um, so I think that is the end of my slides actually. Uh, anything I forgot, Krista? No, I think the next two slides are just, or the next slide is just the, um, Support desk info. We do have one question, however. Will audio controls be unavailable on iPads as well during lockdown? Um, yes, I believe so. So you want to set set that volume level before you start the test. Otherwise, I'll, the student will need to exit, um, and they'll use that little exit button in, up in the corner to... Uh, to leave the test and then adjust the volume and then be reseated and then re-enter credentials to get back in. That was the only other question. Yep. And then just a reminder, like if you think that they should be reseated and the reseating still is not allowing them to proceed, um, you know, contact the help desk because it may be a situation that requires uh, <laughs> MDOE approval. <laughs> I don't know. I have a handful of, of words that my fingers always type incorrectly. I don't know why. Anyway. Um, okay. So then just a refresher on the support desk, uh, PDF downloads, articles, act, review of uh, videos of the tutorials and webinars. Um, and then also this is where you can talk to somebody if you need further help. There's an FAQ. Um, there's also a search bar right here. And so when in doubt, you could always just type in here lockdown and you'll get all the articles that are related to the lockdown browser. Um, and so that's Often the handiest thing, there's there's so much documentation that sometimes browsing along, um, it's just faster to put some keywords into the search bar and then it will bring up a range of options for you. And uh, there are no curveballs. So um, our friend Mike Arsenal has already uploaded the instructions on that website. So um, okay. we're waiting to see if there's anything out of the ordinary and there's not i think a big difference is um for the lock for the lockdown browser for the science test you're going to create a policy uh that installs the package uh, because there's no configuration profile that's needed so that's a little bit different and again if you need any help with any of that the jamf support email is there and and they'd be happy to help you out if you're really new to to assessment i know for some of us it's the first time doing it Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Apparently my dog has one. <laughs> well, if there's no any other questions, uh, we appreciate you coming. The recording and the questions asked will be coming out soon, as well as the slides to everyone who registered, as well as being posted on our site.